close or examine off um, instruction and this is going to be my define it in the in the, in the controller tags when I was adding those tags um, and I did and in here this is the name I'm giving it and I can give it a description so I can call this is my tank pump for instance and it's going to be a big here of the pump so what this is going to do is going to keep this pump running although this uh, condition it went back to its normal state we should continue with our code so I'm going to go ahead and download this uh, great or you know 70% and we want to stop at 30% so Welcome back uh, everyone uh, to uh, this uh, new video where we're gonna write our first uh, program now that we have um, a better understanding and idea about the uh, fundamental instructions for the ladder logic that uh, we went through um, via the previous uh, videos and if you didn't uh, see those, I encourage you to have a look at those videos first. And we also had the opportunity to add our uh, hardware in here, um, as was one of the first videos, as well as adding our uh, controller uh, tags that we're going to use in this uh, small program we're going to write. And essentially this program it's just uh, a start stop uh, for example for a pump uh, with an auto and manual mode so when we are in uh, manual mode we're just going to use the push button to start and stop our pump and if we are in auto mode then we're going to use the level to start and stop our pump so let's start so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add a uh, rank uh, by clicking here and then after that I'm going to add a normally close or examine off um, instruction and this is going to be my stop command and then uh, next I'm going to add also um, a normally open contact and this is going to be it's going to be served as the auto manual command so when you, I am in uh, manual mode I want to be able to start my pump so I'm going to say start command and then I'm going to have my outputs which is my uh, so I'm going to call it pump and you notice here that uh, it's given us an error that's because this uh, pump tag uh, I didn't define it in the in the, in the controller tags when I was adding those tags um, and I did that deliberately so I can show you another way where you can declare your tags uh, versus how we see it in the in that uh, in that previous video so I can just simply right click on this say new and in here this is the name I'm giving it I can give it a description so I can call this is my tank pump for instance and it's going to be a boolean and the scope here is my first project so it's a controller scope which means I can use it in this entire uh, program in this entire PLC and it's going to be recognized versus a local scope which is like local to a program uh, external 
access so it's read and write I mean it's an output so typically read only is, is fine and then the style is decimal so, so I'm gonna say create and there we go we created the this new uh, tag uh, pump and if we go now to the controllers tags we will see it's right there okay so now uh, obviously I want to press this is a push button a momentary push button so when I press on the start um, I want this pump to stay on and this uh, switch here is going to be auto uh, manual so it's either going to be in, in auto mode or manual mode so it's maintain its position so to maintain this pump because if this is just a momentary button if I press it and let go it's going to start and then it's just going to stop as soon as I let go so we need a way to latch this so one way to do that is I can go here click on this and then in parallel with my command here I'm going to add another um, instruction here I'm examine on and then I'm going to put the same tag here of the pump so what this is going to do is going to keep this pump running although this uh, condition it went back to its normal state which is open so then this is going to go stay like this uh, on so let's uh, test that first before we go any further uh, and then make sure that's working as we expected um, and then we can continue with our code so I'm going to go ahead and download this okay as you can see right now we are uh, online with the PLC so right now uh, if I press on this nothing is gonna happen because I am NOT in auto mode but as soon as I toggle this so right now uh, sorry I'm not in manual mode so right now I am in manual mode so this is toggled as soon as I do this you can see my pump is up and running if I go here and turn this off so this is another momentary button for stop you see my pump stop so this is my stop and this is my start so this is working as intended so that's good so we can uh, uh, keep going with our uh, logic so now um, I can continue with building my logic even online so we did this offline um, and now we can do online when we are online with the PLC, uh, there are some limitations um, that um, you know we can't do versus where we are offline. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on this. So as I mentioned before, I said when we are in manual mode, I want to control with the push buttons. When I am in auto mode, I want to control just using the level. However, notice here I have this stop button here upstream of uh, the mode because I want to stop regardless which mode I am in. If I, somebody hits stop, it's going to stop that pump. Whether you are in manual mode or auto mode, the pump will stop. So I'm going to go ahead and put in parallel with this the other mode, which is my auto mode. So when I am at zero this is going to be in auto mode and then I'm going to go ahead and do a, a compare so if I go here if my level is greater so I'm going to say my level and then I'm going to have here my start set point so if my level is greater or equal to my start set point, I want the pump to start. So let's say this is a pump that's uh, basically uh, dumping some liquid or product from a tank and pushing it to somewhere else. So once that level is above certain set point, I want the pump to start. And then I want it to stop uh, once it reach uh, certain levels. So to do so, I can simply do in parallel with this another uh, great or uh, equal so once the level go uh, uh, go below a certain level 
which is your stop set point, this is going to be uh, not true, which is going to break the, uh, the circuit in here and it will stop the pump and we're going to see that. So let's say we want to start at, you know, 70% and we want to stop at 30%. So if I compile this, right now my level is zero, so this pump should not start. So if I go to the uh, auto mode, you see the pump did not start. So I have to at least be above 70% for the pump to, st to start. So if I put here maybe a value of, let's say, 75, you can see the pump just started. So the pump now, it's let's say it's pushing that liquid um, and it's pumping it to the other side. So the level uh, naturally is going to start to drop. So we're just going to simulate that. So let's say I went to 60%. So notice here, the level went below 70, but the pump still stays on. And if I keep going here to, you know, 40% will be the same thing. If I go to 30%, you see the pump, it's still on. But then as soon as I go below that, see the pump just stopped. So that's how this uh, logic is working in auto. So again, the pump will wait until the level go up 70% or above, like this, for it to start automatically. And here we go, it started again. Now notice if I go to the manual mode, to the manual mode like this, notice the pump stays running. So it's a bumpless transfer between the manual mode and the auto mode. So that's how this uh, logic uh, is working. And uh, um, if uh, you notice here, we are executing this logic or this program using this task, which is a continuous task. So I want to uh, spend a little bit of time in here to explain to you uh, some of the differences between having a continuous task, running your program, and a periodic task. So if I go here and say I want a new task, and I'm going to say this is my periodic task, and I'm going to leave everything as um, default, although this 10 uh, milliseconds, so this is how often this task is going to execute, versus the continuous task. The continuous task is basically it executes uh, as soon as it ends, it go back and then execute again, continuously. So the 10 milliseconds for an application like this, it's very, very fast. We don't really need it that fast. So if we don't, uh, a 60 milliseconds will be just, uh, you know, just as good. You will notice the difference. So I'm going to say OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this task like right, like uh, like this. And what I want to show you is a tool that will show you how your processor is doing. So this is called Task Monitor. Um, and you can install it from the Tools uh, folder. So if I go here and I want to monitor my processor, I'm going to go to Start. And then I'm going to go to my Ethernet here. And here's my Ethernet card. And then I'm going to say select. And then here is my my continuous task. You see, it's taking 93% of the CPU. If you look here at the performance, you see how the CPU is running. So it's always running because we have a continuous task. It it does not know how to calculate your CPU usage. So it just tells you like well, I'm running all the time. Now watch what will happen when I do this. So if I go here uh, into my tasks and I go to the program schedule and I'm going to say I'm going to end schedule this program. Now th this what I'm doing right now here uh, in a live system uh, be careful to do things like this because basically what you're going to do you're going to stop equipment from running or start equipment from from uh, running. So typically this ta these tasks I'm doing right now uh, you do them offline and you, you know, you test your things and all that stuff. 
but because we are just in development environment um, I can do these things uh, in here we're just in a, a lab environment so notice now that although I'm not running anything but because I have a continuous task the processor is still showing this now if I go and uh, go back to my periodic task in here and then I'm gonna add this task or this program to my periodic task and I hit OK and then go to the main task in here the continuous task and delete it say yes now notice now how your CPU start to behave so if I go back you see it's already like 97 percent it's no doing nothing but what I have to do it here you see I just refreshed the the tabs so you see what's going on you see now the processor it's like doing nothing so 97 percent of the computing power because your program is so small uh, it's only taking two percent of the power of the CPU so that's why it's very important to if you don't need the continuous task to you know especially for process applications to almost uh, always use the periodic task and you see here for you know for this application we're doing 60 milliseconds is just as good but you see what it does to your processor it make it you know uh, work much much uh, better and in and, and ease basically so you're not hard on the processor you know, on the CPU uh, so I hope uh, you guys enjoyed uh, this video and please uh, subscribe uh, and um, share if you like the content so we can uh, continue making this uh, these videos in this series and again thank you very much for uh, watching